My brothers and sisters in Christ, yesterday I was reading uh, about uh, an interesting appointment, which was at Harvard Harvard University. Uh, news was made when a the the new the university's new head chaplain is an atheist, and he was unanimously elected by the the fellow chaplains of different religious groups to to represent Harvard. Which, ironically, as everyone thinks of Harvard just as you know an I, Ivy League think tank kind of school, Harvard itself in its original founding was to, to help form clergymen uh, to, to the Puritan settlers uh, in our nation's early history. But beyond all this, uh, uh, this has drawn a lot of feedback and remarks of people in shock of how bizarre it sounds to have a, an atheist chaplain. Uh, the, and of course, I have no commentary to offer on the man himself. Uh, I, I don't know him, don't know his heart by those interviewed, he seems to be a, a force for, for good as far as helping people, cooperation, uh, you know, tolerance, and those kind of things. But in a lot of ways, this shouldn't shock us. Uh, and the environment where, you know, universities are devoted to uh, religious studies programs in which no one teaching actually uh, believes in God, uh, it, it just becomes a, a thing of sociology or psychology or philosophy. Um, and so this is, shouldn't shock us in today's current secularized environment. But something that this points out, and the reason I, I was thinking about this with today's readings, is that the readings uh, of the day, both the first reading and the gospel, point to the, the distinction between a knowledge and intellectual faith and an actual lived faith. If, you, if you'll think of the head and the lungs. So it's one thing, a person can know the catechism front and back, they can be a scripture scholar. And in fact, again, in universities, there's many a scripture scholar who can tell you everything in the scriptures, can tell you the archeology, span the history of it, but don't believe in God. They don't actually believe in the God that the scriptures come from and speak of. And so there's the knowledge, if you will, of faith, but then there is the living faith that which is not only motivated by love of God and love of neighbor, but is practiced, is lived out. And so in the gospel passage, we hear of this encounter of Jesus encountering a man who is possessed and the unclean spirit comes out of him. And the unclean spirit speaks of, you know, I know you, you're the Holy One of God. The, the demon himself is one of the first to recognize Jesus for who he is, which should fascinate us because We'll see this as a pattern throughout the scriptures. The demons know who he is. Even as the people deny his identity as the Son of God, the demons know who he is, and yet they reject him. It's an important reminder for us that it's not just enough in our mind to assent to the idea of God or to, to structurally accept an argumentation for God. These are good things, but they're not enough in and of themselves. But instead, our life must constantly live out what we believe. And so in the first reading, when we hear this warning not to be caught, you know, like that God will come like a thief in the night to not fall asleep like the rest of the world, it reminds us that we can move ourselves sometimes in big moments to these great moments of faith or these great acts of charity for others, but our faith is as much defined by the other minutes of the day, the other days of the week, the rest of the days of the year outside those big moments. And so there was a temptation with all the noise of the world in a very secularized world to kind of compartmentalize our faith to the back of our head. And we don't stop believing in God, the tenets of our faith, the church. We still assent to all the uh, you know, intellectually, but we're not living them out. The other days that we don't pray, the other day is that we go about our business so we can be selfish. We don't love our neighbor the way that we should. We still believe all the things we profess, but it actually is not transforming us. And that is what separates the true disciple of Christ, is that we're called not just to understand. In fact, sometimes in our faith is when we assent to and love those things which we don't still fully understand, the mysteries of God that we don't fully grasp, and yet we assent because we know that God is the ultimate good and we're moved for love of God and love of our neighbor. This ultimately is what defines our faith as Christian disciples. And so, yes, we must pursue 
our learning, our catechesis, all of these things, but these alone do not make us disciples of Jesus Christ. These can only take us as far as the demons, who know who he is and yet still are moved by a complete hatred and rejection of God. Let us not be a demon. Let us not be just a secularized good person. Let us not be someone who knows matters of faith and religion and yet in the same breath can profess themselves atheist. May we show the world by our love what it truly means to be Christian, to be disciples of the Holy One of God. May God bless you all.